Hello and welcome, this is Scott at MechSoft. In this video I'm going to give you an introduction to some of the very nice three axis milling capabilities found in Visual Mill by MechSoft. Using this demonstration part, I will create a few basic three axis milling operations that are commonly used to rough and finish parts similar to this. So to get started, I'll bring out the Machining Operations Browser, which you will see appear on the left of your screen. There are three important things that need to be done prior to creating any machining operations. First, I'll define the stock material or workpiece shape. The system creates a minimum box around all the geometry, and I'm going to raise up the top so that I can get full cleanup on the part. Next I'll define the work zero or program zero and I'll reference the stock box that I just created. I'll position the work zero at the highest northwest corner of the stock as you see on the screen and I'll save that. Finally, I've defined three cutters for this job, two ball mills and a flat end mill with a corner radius. Each of these cutters has the tool number, feed rates, coolant and so forth already defined with the tool. With those three things done, I'm ready to machine the part and the first thing that I want to do is rough off all the excess material using a flat end mill. So I'll go to three axis and choose horizontal roughing. This operation will automatically cut all the geometry on the screen so I don't need to select any geometry here. For the tool, I'm going to use the flat end mill. Feeds and speeds, make sure that they are loaded from the tool. Cut parameters, I want to leave 0.6 millimeter stock on all surfaces, do climb cutting, and the step over will be 50% of the tool diameter. Cut levels. I want 30% of the tool diameter calculated as the depth of cut in Z. And I want to make sure that I clear the flats because I do have flats on this particular part, and I do want to leave that amount of stock on each one of those flats. At this point, I'm ready to generate the tool path. Now for these tool paths with levels, I can examine each individual level using this function below the browser. I'll simulate the tool path. The next operation will be a finishing operation which will do parallel passes across the entire face of the part. To do that, I'll go to three axis and choose parallel finishing. Again, no need to select any geometry. I'll use the 12 millimeter ball mill and I want to make sure that the cuts are parallel to the Y axis, which is at 90 degrees, and that the step over is calculated as 20% of the tool diameter. And I'll generate the path. And there's the tool path for the parallel finishing. As you watch the simulation, remember that I set this operation up to finish the part leaving zero stock. But you can also effectively use this as a semi-finishing operation to knock down the large steps left during the roughing process and yet leave stock for final finishing. Now to save time, I'm going to pause the simulation and run it to the end of the path without the tool display. And in just a few moments, you'll see the final results. And there it is. For this final operation, I'm going to again use parallel finishing. But this time, rather than cut the entire surface of the part, I'm going to contain the cutter within a curve-based localized region as you see on the part here. So I'll go to three axis and select parallel finishing. For the containment region, I will select one of the members of this curve set and use the SolidWorks function to chain select the remaining members and create a fully closed containment region. For the tool, I want to use the six millimeter diameter ball mill. For the cut parameters, I'm going to embed this into the surface by a half a millimeter and I want the cut direction to be zero, which is along the length of the region. Now, I can generate the path and simulate the path. 
Now that I've created these three representative operations and assuming that the program is now complete, I'm ready to post-process this job. Post-processing converts the internal generic tool paths that you see displayed on the screen into machine-specific codes for your machine in the shop. Bear in mind that post-processing acts on highlighted objects, including individual operations, if you wish. But to post-process the entire job, I'll select the highest object in the browser, the machining job, and using the right mouse button, I will select Post All. This panel comes up and gives me information about the destination directory where the posted output file will be deposited, the name of the posted output file, and the extension of that file, as well as the name of the post processor that will be used. If those are all correct, I'll select the Post button. The output file is listed on the screen and as a programmer I'll quickly check things like the tool number, feeds and speeds, Z values, just briefly. And if I find anything that is wrong, I'll go back to the original operations, correct the problems, regenerate, and then repost the job. Well there you have an introduction to some of the basic functionality and operations that are available for 3-axis milling in Visual Mill by Mexoft. Thank you.